I was just thinking about the year for you guys, and it, it does seem like it's going to be a great business school case study one day, not just managing the incredible spike of demand uh, a year ago, but how you manage the natural deceleration from here. How's that going to work? Yeah, it's a great question, Carl. And, you know, w the way we've approached this year uh, in terms of planning 2021 is we looked at 2020 and what happened and tried to strip out. So what was related to COVID? Then we looked at our original plan for 2020. What did we expect to happen? Then we went back to 2019 and said, what did actually happen in 2019, stripping out one-time events and applied our strategic planning uh, guidance against that to really figure out what's a winning plan look like for 2021, stripping out all that noise. And that was the guidance that we gave today. But having said that 2020, we finished the year. It was a fantastic year, uh, despite all the challenges. And you know, I'm really proud of our people and the way they showed up, kept each other safe, delivered food to the marketplace and had a year unlike any other that Kellogg's ever had. Yeah. When you think of the lessons from 2020, and I'm talking about not just factory safety, uh, worker safety, but obviously uh, very rapid changes in your supply chain, uh, rising commodity costs. I mean, what, what practices do you think you're going to carry out from 2020 into the next, say, three to five years at least? Well, so much has to do with agility and how quickly, you know, companies can pivot. Uh, that's really important. And everybody learned that in 2020. The other thing for us, it's very important, is really understanding consumer dynamics. You know, it's always been the case that consumers will tell you certain things and they'll behave a certain way. And really understanding the consumer behavior is paramount to success in a company like ours. Now you think about 2021 and what consumers are telling us uh, remains highly uncertain because there's so much that they don't know but really getting to the heart of consumer dynamics, consumer behavior, and being able to reach those consumer in a one-to-one -one way and get our messages across is absolutely paramount to our success going forward. So the investments we've made in data and analytics, in e-commerce, and really making those one-to-one -one connections with consumers for us is among the most important things that we've had to do in terms of really accelerating our capability. Steve, it's Morgan. I mean, M&A continues in the sector. We just saw that planters deal with Kraft selling that business uh, earlier this morning. How are you assessing your portfolio? Are there areas uh, of the foods market that you would like to be more involved in? Yeah, good morning, Morgan. Um, I think there's obviously a crisis like this creates tremendous opportunities. We love the way our portfolio shapes up right now from a brand standpoint, a category standpoint, and a geography standpoint. Having said that, we'll always look for opportunities, and our balance sheet right now is incredibly strong. We took, you know, real measure, measures against it in the fourth quarter. One of the things, you know, people talked about a potential EPS miss in the fourth quarter. Well, we actually, you know, we redeemed additional debt with, uh, with the payment of $20 million, which accounted for, you know, four cents to our EPS this year, really to get our balance sheet in a strong position to give ourselves optionality. And we talked about returning cash to share owners in 2021. We're going to do that. We increased our dividend. We're going to you know, be back into share buybacks. But that gives us flexibility to think about if the right opportunity comes along, whether that be in emerging markets to strengthen our position there or bolt-ons in health and wellness and healthy snacking. You know, we'll look for those opportunities. But it has to be judged against the lens of organic growth which is still very, very exciting for us. You know, look at one brand like ours of Morningstar Farms in the, in the veggie space, grew 26% uh, in 2020. So we're well positioned with our brand portfolio as it exists today, but obviously still we'll always look for opportunities should they present themselves. Uh, Steve, uh, Carl referenced this, but I, I'd like to get a direct answer. I mean, how concerned are you about rising commodity prices, particularly corn, and how are you responding to it and or planning to during the rest of this year? Yeah, David, you know, so we've got a terrific procurement team and, uh, and process. We're well hedged for the first half of the year. There's clearly costs that are rising. You know, we'll always look at productivity to see what we can do to offset rising commodity costs, rising costs in general. So our first line of defense is always to look at productivity, but then to look at revenue growth management opportunities and say, you know, where do we need to get more price? Where do we need to get more value? And that always starts with creating value. Right, creating value for our consumers, for our retailers that they're willing to spend more for. So we think we're well positioned. It will be uh, a challenge as always when costs go up, but we feel like we're in a pretty, you know, a pretty good place. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.